Hi everyone, welcome back to the tutorium in intensive English at the University of Illinois at Chicago. I'm Jordan and I'm your grammar teacher. For today's lesson, we're talking about non-defining relative clauses. If you haven't seen my uh, video on defining relative clauses, I recommend that you go watch that and it may be helpful for today's lesson. Let's see what we have going on today. So in today's lesson, we will look at example sentences using non-defining relative clauses. We'll learn the grammar rules for this concept and we'll practice a little bit with it. So first of all, let's look at these example sentences and see what's happening here. First sentence. Kiki's Delivery Service, which is a Japanese animation, is a cute movie. Second sentence, Chris May, who works at Thai, is one of my favorite people. Third sentence, the Chicago diner, where only vegetarian and vegan food is served, is on Halstead Street. Last sentence, Ellie, whose daughter is one year old, lives in Albany Park. So which part of these sentences is the non-defining relative clause? Well, the non-defining relative clause is that little section in bold and purple between the commas. When you're listening, you can hear a little bit of a pause that tells us that the non-defining relative clause is there. Kiki's delivery service, which is a Japanese animation, is a cute movie. Do you hear that pause where we have those commas? Uh, so even when you're speaking, of course, you're not speaking, saying comma, uh, but you can hear the, the pause of the comma. So Chris May, comma, who works at Thai, comma, is one of my favorite people. The Chicago Diner, where only vegetarian and vegan food is served, is on Halstead Street. Ellie, whose daughter is one year old, lives in Albany Park. Now, what do these, uh, what does a sentence with a non-defining relative clause really mean? Well, think of it this way. The non-defining relative clause can be removed from the uh, original sentence. So, for example, Kiki's Delivery Service is a cute movie. We're actually adding in uh, an extra sentence. We're putting a sentence inside of another sentence. So, as two sentences, we would say, Kiki, Kiki's Delivery Service is a cute movie also, it's a Japanese animation. Let's try another one. In the first sentence, Chris May is one of my favorite people. But uh, if we take that non-defining relative clause out and create a second sentence, we could say Chris May is one of my favorite people. Also, she works at Thai. In our third sentence, it's the same thing. We can say the Chicago diner is on Halstead Street. Also, they only serve vegetarian and vegan food. In our last sentence, we can say, Ellie lives in Albany Park. Also, she has a daughter who is one year old. So we use non-defining relative clauses to add that second sentence, that also sentence. Think of it this way. 
Another name for relative clause is adjective clause. Adjectives are used to describe nouns. So this extra information helps to describe what was in the first sentence. And so the purpose of all of this is really just for describing nouns all in one sentence, uh, instead of having to separate them into two sentences. However, these are different from defining relative clauses because in a defining relative clause, this information is necessary. However, in non-defining relative clauses, we are really giving this extra information. It's not necessary to know about the noun, but maybe it's just something extra that I wanna tell you. We also uh, before talked about the structure a little bit um, of these non-defining relative clauses. When we're speaking, there is a pause. So we have our subject, comma, which is a Japanese animation, comma, is a cute movie. So those commas are important. That's where they tell us, hey, I'm adding in this extra information here. So rule number two is after the subject, we add comma plus a relative pronoun. We'll talk about what that is, plus our extra information, comma, and then we can finish the rest of the sentence. So looking at our first sentence, Kiki's delivery service is the subject, comma, which is a Japanese animation, comma, there's our non-defining relative clause, is a cute movie. That finishes the sentence. Something I want you to notice is that uh, the relative pronoun that we use here is which, because Kiki's delivery service is a thing. In non-defining relative clauses, we do not use that. Instead, we use which. Let's look at our second sentence. Chris May, comma, who works at Thai, comma, is one of my favorite people. We have done the same thing. Chris May is the subject who works at Thai, describes Chris May, and then we finish the rest of the sentence, is one of my favorite people. Now, again, our relative pronoun has changed. Instead of which, we use who, because Chris is a person. So with things, we use which. With people, we can use who. Let's look at the third sentence. The Chicago diner, where only vegetarian and vegan food is served, is on Halstead Street. So we need to describe Chicago diner. Now, again, our relative pronoun, just like with defining relative clauses, uh, changes because of the subject that we've used. The subject that we're using is a place. So in this case, we use where. This last one is the hardest one because it's possessive, whose. So Ellie, comma, whose daughter is one year old, comma, lives in Albany Park. Whose replaces a word like his, or her, or their. 
And so we know that Ellie, her daughter is one year old, lives in Albany Park. Instead of using a word like her, we say whose. There is a graphic here for all of you. Just as a reminder, with people, we use who, who, and whose. With things, we can use which, which, and whose. With places, we use where. And with time, we use when. Whew, this is a lot of information. Let's practice. So our first sentence. Nur Sultan is the capital of Kazakhstan. Also, its previous name was Astana. So this second sentence also, we want to add that to the first sentence. So we're combining the two using a non-defining relative clause. How do we do that? We can say Nur Sultan, whose previous name was Astana, is the capital of Kazakhstan. Why are we using whose? Well, look at the original second sentence. We see its, which is possessive. So remember, with our possessive pronouns, we want to use whose. It's kind of hard, right? Let's try another one. Siberia is in Russia. Also, it gets cold there in the winter. Let's see if we can combine these two sentences using a non-defining relative clause. So Siberia is a place. What kind of relative pronoun do you think we might use? What do we use with places? We can say Siberia, where it gets cold in the winter, is in Russia. So again, that second sentence, it just goes right in the middle with a relative pronoun, where. Next one, pandas eat bamboo. Also, they're my favorite animal. Okay, so uh, we want to add that pandas are my favorite animal in addition to eating bamboo. Let's see how we can do that. Pandas, which are my favorite animal, eat bamboo. Now, many people ask, when you have an animal, do you use which or do you use who? In reality, you can use both depending on your feelings. Let's try another one. Miss Major is a transgender activist. Also, she was born in Chicago. Okay, so Miss Major, is it person, place, thing, time, person, obviously. So what relative pronoun would we want to use? Let's see. Miss Major, who was born in Chicago, is a transgender activist. Okay, let's try, uh, I believe this is the last one. Ramadan is celebrated for a month. Also, Muslims around the world fast during this time. Okay, so how can we combine Ramadan and Muslims around the world fast during this time? Let's see. Ramadan, when Muslims around the world fast, is celebrated for a month. 
Why am I using when? Well, Ramadan can be considered a time. Whew, that was a long lesson, wasn't it? It's a lot of information. And adjective clauses are pretty difficult and they take some time to learn. So this is really just an introduction to adjective clauses. In our next uh, level, we'll be returning to adjective clauses. So please make sure to come back and uh, see our videos. If this was confusing or you're still unclear about when to use adjective clauses or how to use adjective clauses, that's okay. It will get better. For now, just observe what's happening in these sentences. And as we continue to practice, it'll get a little bit clearer. So thanks for spending time with me today and I'll see you in the next video.